Right, let's get going with question two. So when we're looking at question two, as you can see on the question paper here, I have the source. They have given me the lines, but because it, the screen keeps doing this funny flash thing that it's never done before, I can't fix it at the moment. I'm going to do the markups on the actual source because it's not doing it there. So let's revise the question. So how does the writer use language here to convey Mr. Fisher's views on books and stories of the past? You could include the writer's choice of words and phrases, language features and techniques. So let's look at what we're doing. So we know we need to go to lines 9 to 15. We've already done that. So let's find lines 9 through to 15. So that's this paragraph here. And you are not absolutely not going to be commenting on anything else apart from lines 9 to 15. Remember, it's only an eight mark question. It's only two to three, three absolute maximum paragraphs. So most likely two. So you are going to look for two pieces of evidence for each paragraph. That's what you need at a minimum to get some of those marks. So let's see. So Mr. Fisher remembered a time, surely not long ago, when, so let's highlight this, books were golden so that's a viewpoint he has um then he describes the books imagination swords so that is the consequence of the book so i'm going to put the consequences of the books in green so imagination sword well actually it could be um a consequence of the books being golden but it could also be he's a remembering the authors and saying how the books were better the imaginations in the books because they were golden had the writers had better imaginations and we can see that at the end of the paragraph so we have a reasonable interpretation let's say so when the world was filled with stories which ran like gazelles and pounced like tigers and exploded like rockets so here we've got ran like gazelles Pounced like tigers, exploded like rockets. Here we have simile. This is a language feature and technique that you can talk about. So one of your paragraphs, paragraph number two, could be exactly that. Talking about the use of similes in order to create some sort of effect. Then we've got illuminating minds and hearts. He had seen it happen, had seen whole classes swept away in the fever. So here we've got a consequence of the stories when books were golden. In those days, there were heroes, there were dragons and dinosaurs. There were space adventures and soldiers of fortune and giant apes. So the, here he's describing, he's reminiscing, actually. I mean, the writer's reminiscing because it's written in the third person. It's not written in the first. So the first person narrative would be if Mr. Fisher were writing this like as a journal entry or writing a memoir type story of his experiences. But this is third person. So it's the narrator, the, write, the author of the story telling us what's happening. It's giving us an inside view. So actually, you could talk about that, actually, because it's kind of giving you this omniscient uh, perspective. So that's something else you could talk about. In those days, there were heroes, there were dragons and dinosaurs, there were space adventurers and soldiers of fortune. So he's talking about the content or the narrator is telling us how Mr. Fisher's remembers what the content of the stories are. So there's heroes. And actually, that's the first one. Heroes, dragons and dinosaurs, space adventurers or adventures, soldiers, giant apes. In those days, thought Mr. Fisher, we dreamed in color, though films were in black and white and good always triumphed in the end. So this is it. You could say that he's got quite a, he had a romantic understanding he had a romantic experience of books and this is what the writer is doing when he's talking about Mr. Fisher's experiences so if we look on the screen the in those days there were heroes there were dragons and dinosaurs space adventures so it's I mean, heroes is first in the list. And here you've got another language feature. He's listing. There are lots of lists 
in this paragraph. And you've got to think, well, this language feature of a list, this technique where he's listing similes, ran like a gazelle, pounced like a tiger, exploded like rockets. Then you've got, um, there were heroes, dragons, dinosaurs, space adventures, soldiers of fortune and giant apes lots of lists what does this do to the reader it creates like a run-on it's uh talking about the memory it's almost as if mr fisher's mind is running away from him so it's these techniques that you can talk about and this analysis of gives the reader um the idea that mr fisher is feeling really nostalgic about it he's reminiscing he's feeling almost like the past is lost and he can't understand, as we know from the previous paragraphs, the children he t currently teaches just don't want to know. They're not enthusiastic about books the way he was when he was learning. And surely not so long ago. That's an aside. And the omniscient narrator is giving us this inside view into Mr. Fisher's mind. So the next thing that we do is well, how do we put this into a paragraph? How does, how do we organize our information? Now, there are two ways you can do this. First is follow the bullet points. And actually for most of my students, I say follow the bullet points because then you can ensure you've written down the information that the examiner wants to see. And remember, we are writing for an exam. So it's not always about being really poetic and being really pretty when you're writing. Unfortunately, this is about writing to an exam. But what we want to do is make you better writers, make you more analytical, because in the end, that is what will get you the marks that you want as well. So let's have a think. Now, plan your answer. We're going to do a more in-depth plan than you would do in an exam, because I want to take you through the whole process. But you'll get the idea. So first up, we're going to have two paragraphs. And I'm going to do it like paragraphs because we can include sentence forms within the words and features and the language features and techniques but if you want to talk about sentence forms we can do a third paragraph so let's first I'm going to do a little plan let's divide our page and look back at our source so we're going to do I'm just going to do words and phrases we're going to do lang features and techniques sentence forms so maybe we'll do three paragraphs just because it's easy peasy sentence forms okay and I know the screen's flashing so I'm going to do my best to edit that out so it's less annoying right words and phrases and remember how does the writer use language here to convey Mr. Fisher's views on stories so first we've got to look at well, what does he think about the past well, he's quite nostalgic about the past. So we can look at, well, let's go for the easy one. So language features and techniques. We've got simile. And we've got, and we've got lists. So sentence forms, you've got, Let's look, look, literally what I suggest you do is actually go look at the, the sentence lengths. That's the easiest thing to do and say, have they got long sentences, short sentences? So sentence forms, so long sentences with, we've got an aside in the first sentence. So that's number nine. And in your exam, you won't write outside the box, but as I'm annotating it to show you, I'm going to just continue writing all over the paper. But make sure you um, pay attention to the rules um, because I think that's where the examiners actually do their marking. They put the ticks there and just whatever they need. Okay, long sentences with a side. That's line nine. Um, what else we've got? I'm going to put lists here. But you can decide which paragraph you're going to put it in. Um, so we also for words and phrases, you can think we've got quite vivid imagery. And for example, you've got like when books were golden. And these, 
ideas have more subliminal messages as well because if you think of books are golden think about what you know golden the word to mean what are what do you associate with golden sparkling probably something that's gold like a ring or um, a coin or maybe you've got a Christmas tree star that's golden the sun is golden so that all those associations are usually quite happy they're something that's valuable and sparkly and brings joy so the writer has used the word golden hip when books were golden what's changed because he's put it in the past tense so now we just organize well all this evidence we've got we don't need it all we just need roughly four pieces of evidence for this because it's eight marks but if you're going to have a paragraph make sure you use point evidence explain link and we'll look at how you do that so now i'm just looking here where would you put the information let's think about maybe you can do this along with me grab a piece of paper and we're going to organize where do we put our evidence so in words and phrases vivid imagery um what else we can even hear comment on past tense because the words are in past tense Mm. and it's almost let's talk about nostalgic language okay so here I've got the basic ideas and now we're going to select which lines we're going to use so vivid imagery what do I want to use now I could link this with the simile but because I am wanting to create a diverse range of evidence I'm actually going to use the when books were golden and this links with my past tense and my nostalgic language actually when books were golden so here I can link these two together so I've got I've stated what it is vivid imagery and given the example when books were golden I'm saying it's written in the past tense and this implies that it's nostalgic language and then I always I can then uh, go to the final line or the final sentence in those days thought Mr Fisher we dreamed in color the films were black and white and good always triumphed on in the end so nostalgic language I can say Good, uh, in those days, Mr. Fisher, in those days thought Mr. Fisher, good always triumphed in the end. So I'm going to shorten that quote because you don't want a whole sentence as a quote. It just doesn't work. It's, it takes up the whole paragraph and you, ha you don't need the whole thing because that's not what you're talking about. So I'll show you how to shorten a quote. So in those days... And then I'm going to go dot, dot, dot. And that will cut out everything I don't want. Thought. Mr. Fisher. Comma. And then dot, dot, dot. Good. Always. Triumphed in the end and that is how you shorten a quote so that you can use the bits you need but without changing the sentence because the problem is so I've had some students they want to use the beginning and they want to use the end and then they'll put it together but they won't actually show that they've cut information you when you are quoting anything actually that you haven't written you need to put the dot dot dots where there is missing information to show the reader that there is more to it so that's how you do it now when we look at language features and techniques we've got similes and lists so you may so lists actually the writer has lists of similes and 
They've got uh, topics of stories. So he's got two lists. And they both take up long sentences, so it links, actually. So you may want to combine uh, language features and techniques with the sentence forms because they do link together. And then the simile, we've got... You could actually use all of these, but you don't have to. So let's say ran like a gazelle. And what does this mean so what you're going to talk about when you analyze it when you explain this and show it's significant you're going to talk about what does this phrase imply so when the world was filled with stories which ran like a gazelle so a gazelle is fast speedy it's exciting because the implications is when something is fast or speedy is that it's exciting. You want to go along with it. And this is what you want to talk about. You want to say the writer has used language here in the form of a simile to give the reader a, bet, uh, a better understanding of how fast paced the stories were, how exciting they were, because they ran like a gazelle. A human can't run like a gazelle. A gazelle is its an animal that will run away from a lion. It's really fast. If you just go look up a gazelle um, on YouTube or something, go look up a gazelle. They're so quick. And then you've also got pounce like tigers. So it's, you know, strong. The stories are strong like tigers. They're ag aggressive, perhaps, but in a, in a way that's exciting and you want to know it's an adventure because on our second list, it talks about dragons and dinosaurs. It talks about heroes. It talks about space adventure. This idea of, oh, these stories were amazing. And Mr. Fisher wishes that, he, th that this was still the way. And he's like, he can't understand why the kids don't understand this. So when you're describing the language you're saying, you're focusing on the language and saying, these words convey that Mr. Fisher is nostalgic. He, he loves or he really connected with the idea of these, with these stories that good always triumphs in the end. And he, the fact that they're using lists, it emphasizes the importance of these stories and the fact that it's good that triumphs over the end. So that's, let's go, uh, emphasizes Mr. F's feelings. And then you'll explain that. Okay, then you've got sentence forms. So here you can actually link these two with lists and similes. So we've got long sentences with sides. We've got lists. So you can talk about that and say the long sentences help the reader go on the journey with Mr. Fisher through the narrator's writing. It's not stunted because short sentences stop the flow of the sentence. So because they're long, you want to keep reading it. It's almost like a rolling like the ocean, it keeps you moving and makes you more interested and intrigued by the story because you want to know what happens next. So let's say more interesting keeps reader moving with the story. Okay, so with that in mind, let's have a look at what we do next. So now that you've planned it, this is a rough plan, you are going to do a paragraph on, here's paragraph number one, here's paragraph number two, and here's paragraph number three. In your paragraph stu structure, you will need to a point, evidence, explain, and link. You don't need 
um, introduction, conclusion, things like that for this question because it's only an eight mark question. So next we're going to look at how we write these into an answer. And actually I've just found out why the screen keeps flashing. It's because I'm writing on an image. So what I'm going to do is in your question paper, you will have lined paper, see with the extra space and then turn over for the next question. What I'm going to do is actually just delete these images um, and write on the Word document itself, on the pages document, because then it won't flash and be annoying. So let's delete that. But just so you got the idea of that's where the lined paper will be in your question paper. Right onwards so let's make this a little bit smaller now it's a good idea to always have your your source paper next to you obviously with this question you have the source part at the top to make sure you are answering on only this part of the text now as you know i did my annotations on the source material text um just because everything was flashing on the original screen but now i figured out the problem i have a solution right paragraph one so we're going to do a draft together and you can tell me what you think but actually if you really want to have a go um and see what we can come up with i suggest that you pause here and do the paragraphs by yourself have a go remember you want to appoint evidence and explanation so if i just go through here and please excuse the flashing because i'm writing on the image you are going to write a point so i want you to rephrase the question when you write your answer because you want to signpost your examiner to say, hey, I have answered the question. So you could say, the writer uses words and phrases in the, the text to convey Mr. Fisher's views on books and stories of the past. He does this by, and then you can use a quote. So, if you want to do the have a go at the question by yourself, pause here and write out the answer. If not, we're going to go straight on to doing it together. So let's have a look. So as I said, let us start with paragraph one. And we're going to start with our point. For example, in the text. Okay, looks like I'm typing because my pen doesn't work. Right, so in the text, the writer uses, let's say, hey, so we're gonna even rephrase this. So we're gonna say words and phrases to, and let's double check the question, how it's worded, we wanna use that. Using words as phrases to convey to convey Mr. Fisher's views on books and stories of the past. So let's look back at our notes. Then we're gonna look and say, okay, he uses vivid, vivid imagery. I want to use when books were golden. So we know it's the past. Aha, there is my text. So let's write a heading. So this is answer. Okay, in the text, the writer uses words and phrases to convey Mr. Fisher's view on books and stories of the past. So we know vivid in imagery, we can say, or oh, on line nine, the writer describes Mr. Fisher's view that books were golden. And then we want to explain it. This is this vivid image shows that Mr. Fisher believes 
that the content of books when he was younger had a magical element. He is nostalgic, meaning like missing the past. Nostalgic for this time. And we can see this when the writer, now we're coming to our last piece of evidence. The writer states, in those days, dot, 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 thought Mr. Fisher, dot, 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 good, always triumphed over evil. Close quote. Now we want to explain this quote to give it a little bit more. So in, let's have a look at our, our paragraph so far and just double check. So in the text, the writer uses words and phrases to convey Mr. Fisher's view on books and stories of the past. On line nine, the writer describes Mr. Fisher's... Here, we've got a typo. Mr. Fisher's view that books were golden. This vivid image shows that Mr. Fisher believes that the content of books when he was younger had a magical element. He is nostalgic for this time, and we can see this when the writer states, in those days, thought Mr. Fisher, good always triumphed over evil. So, it can be interpreted Let's spell, it, spell interpreted correctly, though. Interpreted. Can't even. There we go. Finally got it. So it can be interpreted that Mr. Fisher... I'm just going to... Oh, have a look at the side with my text because actually this is why you always want to have the text with you, with your notes. Um, so it can be interpreted that Mr. Fisher wishes it was still like this. And there you go, that is one paragraph done. Let's have a look at paragraph two. So we can, we're can we going to start in a very similar way. We want to make a point, which is using our question. And then we're going to go on with our evidence. So what's the next one? Let's have a look. Language features and techniques. So let's start this paragraph. So the writer also uses... language features and techniques to convey Mr. Fisher's feelings towards books and stories of the past. For example, the writer makes use of similes on lines 10 to 11 to describe the strength of the stories Mr. Fisher used to read. We can see this when it is stated that stories which ran like 
gazelles. Which implies the idea that the stories could be fast paced and exciting. Or or that the stories pounced like tigers and exploded like rockets. Which gives the reader the idea that, let's spell idea right, which gives the reader the idea that What does it give the idea about what do you think? Um, idea that stories had a lot of action. They were sometimes exotic and full of adventure. The use of this list carry list in the sentence in the sentence carries the reader along and shows the strong feelings the that mr fisher has mainly nostalgia. So here, let's think back, let's look. So actually, that would be your, um, you wouldn't need to do the third paragraph on sentence structures. You've already used a lot of evidence. You've given explanations. You've got your point. You've got evidence. You've got the explanation and you've got the link at the end. So let's have a look and double check. So how does the writer use language here to convey Mr. Fisher's views on books and stories of the past. So in the text, the writer uses words and phrases to convey Mr. Fisher's views on books and stories of the past. On line nine, the writer describes Mr. Fisher's view that books were golden. This vivid image shows that Mr. Fisher believes that the contents of books when he was younger had a magical element. He is nostalgic for this time, and we can see this when the writer states, in those days, thought Mr. Fisher, good always triumphed over evil. So it can be interpreted that Mr. Fisher wishes it was still like this. And let's correct the punctuation. Second paragraph. The writer also uses language features and techniques to convey Mr. Fisher's Make sure you correct. So when you're writing this in your test, make sure you double check that you're using the correct punctuation and grammar so you don't lose any marks. Or at least so you gain the marks that you should have because you know how to do it. The writer also uses language features and techniques to convey Mr. Fisher's feelings towards books and stories of the past. For example, the writer makes use of similes on lines 10 to 11 to describe the strength of the stories Mr. Fisher used to read. We can see this when it is stated that stories which ran like gazelles. And here, rather than which, I'm just going to put a dot, 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 because we don't need the which. Dot, 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 ran like gazelles, which implies the idea that stories could be fast-paced and exciting. Ting. My goodness. Or that stories pounced like tigers and exploded like rockets, which gives the reader the idea that stories had a lot of action. They were sometimes exotic and full of adventure. The use of this list in the sentence carries the reader along and shows the strong feelings that Mr. Fisher has, mainly that mis mainly nostalgia. Now, I actually, I'd want to explain expand on this one a little bit more, make it much, a little bit more clear. So that 
we are answering the question more clearly. So how does the writer use language here to convey Mr. Fisher's views on books and stories of the past? So let's look at what we could do to edit this. Mm -mm -mm. And let's look at the question. I always like to have the question in front of me so that I know how to write what I want to write. And also, if you're not answering the question, you won't get the marks. How does the writer use language here to convey Mr. Fisher's views on books and stories of the past? Convey. So it's to communicate. Convey means to communicate, put across. Okay, mainly nostalgia. And I just want to add a little bit and I can add another, maybe a little, little idea, uh, another quote, mainly nostalgia and that stories from the past used to past had the ability to let's say ability of illuminating minds and hearts So for Mr. Fisher, stories were also an educational experience and lesson. Which, as a reader, we get full sense of when the writer uses such vivid imagery in the language. And there we go. That is, and we haven't even needed to include all the ideas we had. So you can change, actually, what you would like. So that's it. That is how to do question two. The best thing to do is actually practice. Practice your answers. Have a think about, well, how would you answer this? What would you do? You can have a go, pause this video and think about, well, what would you do? How would you write the answer? Would you change anything? Would you add anything? Would you write it differently? You don't have to write much, actually. I've probably written too much in the second paragraph because you're gonna be handwriting this, not typing it. So you'll be able to see how much room you take up. But you need two paragraphs at a minimum. Well. Minimum, maximum, three at an absolute maximum. Just make sure you include everything that's relevant and you actually answer the question. Okay, we're gonna go over to question three now and have a look at that one.